Before we spend a lot of time talking about how to build a T-Rex and how to configure a T-Rex to work in a network, we should probably spend a little bit of time talking about the network we're using for this demonstration. You can see here we have one data center and two branches. The data center is connected to two different transports. It has two V edges, uh, DC WAN 1 and DC WAN 2. They're running a T-lock extension between them. And then at the branch, we have a CSR1000V running iOS XE SD WAN code, and each branch is dual connected to the internet and just connected to a switch behind it. Won't spend a lot of time talking about this particular design or use case. Uh, mostly we just want to understand how the traffic flow through the network will look from the branch to the data center. You can see here where, where we've uh, carved out some IP addressing for our T-Rex and for our emulated clients and servers. And so next, we really should explain at a high level how the T-Rex actually works. Now, in this demonstration and for the purposes of, of this lab, the T-Rex is actually just a virtual machine uh, running a particular distribution of Linux. And then on that distribution of Linux, we're going to run the T-Rex software. So if you can imagine, there's a, a virtual machine here which is the T-Rex itself. And the T-Rex is going to have multiple interface connections. So this works in a port pair model. So you could say that the T-Rex has one interface connected to the core and one interface connected to the client switch. And the idea is that the T-Rex will generate traffic from the client. It'll flow through the network towards the server. So. You can see here where we've uh, allocated some IP addressing for that. So let me explain that a little bit better. Right here, we have 10.1.10.0 slash 24. That is a VLAN and subnet within the DC core for servers. Um, you could connect real servers to this. So this say uh, Windows servers, DHCP servers, any kind of real servers. But on that subnet, we've also allocated an IP address for the T-Rex, and the T-Rex interface connects to that VLAN. Now, in this case, this is running T-Rex at a layer three uh, mode, meaning that the T-Rex acts kind of like a router, um, but without running any routing protocols. So that interface is allocated to the T-Rex's interface, and then the T-Rex has emulated servers behind it. So these are emulated. These do not exist. This is part of the T-Rex configuration. We have to allocate a subnet that's not being used elsewhere for those emulated devices. So we've used 10.1.11.0/24. That's the subnet which all of the T-Rex servers, uh, the emulated servers, will be using as their IP address. And on the other side, for the clients, we've done basically the same thing. We've taken the client VLAN 10.10.10.0, and this is the normal client VLAN, uh, normal client VLAN where we have you can have Windows uh, workstations behind it or something like that. We've allocated an IP address and an interface on the switch for the T-Rex, and then behind the T-Rex we have emulated clients which are going to use. 10.10.11.0. So that whole class C will be for the T-Rex emulated clients. Once we've configured the T-Rex to work, it'll send client traffic from 10.10.11.x, number of emulated clients, and their destination IP will be the T-Rex servers living in the core at 10.1.11.x. So the traffic generation needs to go through the network get routed through the network and end up on the other end. And that's a very high level overview of how the T-Rex will work. The other thing to keep in mind is, as I mentioned, the T-Rex running in layer three mode works kind of like a router, but without routing protocols. So what that means is that our, our emulated subnets 10.1.11 and 10.10.11 don't exist on the switches. So the DC core doesn't actually have a VLAN interface 10.1.11.1. And the same is true of the branch switch, 
it doesn't have an interface for 10.10.11. What does that mean? Well, it means that we have to rely on other methods to inject those prefixes into the network so they'll be routed. Uh, the way we're going to do it is by using a static route. So we're going to construct a static route on the branch switch that says if you want to reach 10.10.11.0/24, your next hop will be 10.10.10.65, which is the interface and IP that we've allocated to the T-Rex itself. And it's true on the other side as well. If, if anyone wants to get to 10.1.11.0/24, the next hop will be 10.1.10.65 which is the T-Rex. So by creating these static routes and then injecting them into our routing protocols, we're going to provide the network reachability that we need to route the traffic generated through the network.